and planning on releasing my museum builder demo in the first quarter. In the first quarter. <laughs> ah, that didn't happen. This is why I hate announcing my plans. Anywho, let's find out what actually did happen in this first quarter and see where my museum game is right now. Let's start with the elephant in the room. It's been a while since my last devlog and the museum builder demo isn't ready. For those who follow me on Twitter, you may already be aware, but I took a break from game dev for about two months and I've been back at it for about one. On a technical side, everything is still on track, but the demo has been delayed because of this break I took and possibly due to some other reasons I'll get into in a moment. But let's put that aside and take a look at the progress on the game. Okay, here we are in the game. It's not much to look at, but is an excellent base for building museums. Obviously the isometric grid will be the core of building the game world, and most of my work has been around using that grid. At the moment I can toggle between cell, corner and edge modes, with the grid highlighting where the mouse is. When I click, it highlights a line to the mouse, and if I hold control, then that turns into a box selection. This feels pretty great, and I'm currently looking into placing permanent objects onto this grid, at which point I'll be able to import all the concept graphics and basically have a space museum builder. I can't wait to get to that point because that's when I'll be able to release the museum builder demo, I'll get to see the museums you create and get feedback on how you think it feels. It's not all being isometric grids though, both literally and figuratively, because I have support for rectangular grids and I worked on a number of engine features that aren't immediately visible but will be super helpful for any game created in the engine. The first of these features was player input. I added support for mouse, keyboard and controllers as well as the ability to rebind any actions to any input. When I get to UI I hope to make use of this system by creating an input customization screen and give the player the ability to use their preferred input choices. Another feature I added was automated tests, specifically unit tests. These are small functions that can test the input and output of individual parts of the system. As a solo dev, I find these incredibly valuable because I can just run an entire test suite to verify everything's working in the game, whereas in the past I would have had to have manually checked everything. As it stands, I hope to keep growing my ability to test to ensure the quality of the game engine and the games created with it. Speaking of which, the last feature I want to mention was created using test-driven development where you write the tests before you write the implementation. The feature in question is Collision. I use Separating Axis Theorem for checking collisions, which I recently released a video on, and I used Quad Trees for performance reasons, which I've also discussed in the past. All in all, I feel very positive about the direction of the game, despite the delays. Speaking of delays, as this devlog airs, I'm participating in Pixelmania, which I hope to release a few small videos on. This all puts the release of the demo back by about a month or two, so I think it will be ready in July, but we'll see. I hope you've enjoyed this devlog for my museum management game. Leave the video a like to let me know you did and comment to give me any feedback. If you want to keep up to date with the development of the game, then subscribe to get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching, goodbye.